Welcome to the Crystal Starn Show with your host, Crystal Starnes. Today, we have a fabulous guest that's going to be coming on the show. Her name is Tootsie Barron. And Tootsie is from New Jersey. And she wrote a book. And she's going to be telling all of you about this book. And she's the only woman in the world to ever write this book that you're going to hear about today. So let's welcome Tootsie Barron to the show. Hi, Tootsie. Hi, Crystal. I'm so happy to be here. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And thank you so much for coming on the show today. I'm so looking forward to hearing about you and about what you've been doing and and about your book and everything. So welcome. And thank you, everyone, for watching the show today. And thank you again, Just TV, for airing the show on your network. So I guess we'll start off with um, maybe telling the audience a little bit about who you are and your background. Well, I am Tootsie Gallo Barron. I was born and raised in Jersey City, New Jersey. And in at that time, and the, the book takes place, it, it, it is called Sugar Paper. It takes place in the 60s, 70s, and I ended in 1982. During those years, uh, the mob, the mafia was really at its height. It was still going very strong. And I grew up in Jersey City, uh, which had a very large Italian population because it is the second largest city in New Jersey, second only to Newark. And so I grew up with a lot of Italians and many of which uh, ultimately became wise guys. Their fathers may have been wise guys before them. I was always surrounded with men. Uh, once upon a time, I was blessed to have had five brothers. Sadly, they're all gone now. But um, I, I was always around the guys. And I got it in my head that someday I'm, I'm going to write a book uh, about, about the wise guys and the mob. I would not have done it if I had not gotten a blessing from one of the godfathers over 30 years ago. And when I got the blessing to write it, I, he gave it to me with two stipulations. One, that I had to make wait a minimum of 25 years. And I think that's almost self-explanatory. They want to be certain that a lot of these guys, even though it's a work of fiction, uh, are not recognizable since they always think they're being followed. And most of the time they are all being watched. And so many years had to go by that they would either be gone or retired or whatever. And the second stipulation was that I could never write a single word down prior to the time of writing the book, because if the law had ever come in, that would have been deemed as ev evidence and it would have been confiscated and it would have been very, very strong evidence. So with, the, with those two stipulations in mind, uh, I certainly would have never written this book without the blessing because as a gallo, I would know better and I just wouldn't do it. And the other thing I want everyone to know that while it, while it is, a totally mobbed up book and not ever having been done by a woman to our knowledge, anyone's knowledge. We can't find anybody that could contradict that. Uh, I never denigrated my people because I am a gallo and I am Italian. And, and I want everyone to know that right up front. No one gets denigrated in the book. The book is about the mob and its biggest money maker all over the country, which is bookmaking, gambling. And it is owned by the, the mob families all over the country. And especially back then, because there weren't any cas casinos. This is before the casinos, before the books in the casinos. Nevada was the only state that had it. And so, uh, you know, they, they owned it. And, and that's what's what the book is about the heroine. Her name is Kiki Fontana. She she went to work for the mob. 
I don't want to disclose too much about the book because uh, a lot of it is secretive and doesn't get, I put a cloaking device on the seven main characters. None of them are disclosed. No, nobody is who you think they are, by the way, until the very last chapter when everything is revealed. And the main character is uh, her godfather, Kiki's godfather. She calls him uncle. He happened to have been her father's best friend. They grew up together. He is the largest odds maker in the country, in the entire country. He owns that world. He is the man who brings Kiki into it. That's how she ends up in the world that's controlled by nothing but men. She's the only woman in that world. And she rises to the top. Uh, it does get a little graphic in just in one chapter where it needs to be. It gets a little raunchy towards the end. And it needs to be there. Otherwise, uh, not at all. Uh, but but I, I do take you right into the into that world from the bottom up, exactly how it works and how much money is, is moved around the country on these games all over the country. And basically, Kiki's job was she became a bookmaker for the mob. And her job was to go and shop for numbers, to find the best numbers, whether she was laying them or taking them. And listen, when it comes to shopping, it makes sense. They should all be women. Nobody's ever going to out shop a woman. <laughs> I <on>. know that. <laughs> we're born with that gene, that shopping gene. I think we're all born with it. So yeah, we are. Nobody was going to out shop Kiki. <laughs> and she became... She really did become so good at it. And she uh, she ultimately retires only because she gets forced into retirement. But again, I don't want to divulge it because uh, it, 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 is, it is almost a mystery, what you would call a mystery, as well as a story about uh, the mob's biggest moneymaker. It's, it's really, I, I really turned it into a mystery when I put the cloaking device on the seven main characters. So, but, but by the end, everything is disclosed. Who, everybody, nobody was who you thought they were until the end. And then you're going to find out who everybody is. And then I wrap it up. Um, I also, because I realized uh, one thing, Mob movies make all the money in Hollywood. There hasn't been a good Italian mobbed up movie, completely mobbed up in over 30 years. So I got to thinking, well, maybe you should write the screenplay to go along with it, which is exactly what I did. I went and bought a book, how to write a screenplay, because I'm a novelist, I'm a poet, I write children's books, uh, but I had never tried a screenplay. I went and got a book, studied the book. I wrote the screenplay to go with it. In December, last month, it just went up to sale, for, for sale. It is up for sale in Hollywood as we speak. Hopefully, if I catch a, a lucky break, one of the production companies out there, they're going to see the value in a totally mobbed up book, which has never been done by a woman. And they're chirping a lot out there in Hollywood. They want to be more inclusive. They want more, more work from women. Well, I've got it. <laughs> Come and get it because I've got it. And, and that is that prim primarily the reason why I wrote the screenplay is because how, uh, mob movies make all the money in history. Uh, history has taught us in Hollywood. So I thought I would take a shot. Let's see where it goes. I'm hoping somebody's going to see it and say, yay, it's, it's time for us to, to make a movie about the mob. And it is completely mobbed up, the book, from the beginning to the end, uh, by a woman. And hopefully I'm going to get it to the big screen. That's that's my goal, is, is to have sugar paper made into a feature film. Although it could it could also be made be made into a serial uh, like the Sopranos, I would rather see it up on the big screen along with the with the with with the others and and of course 
I've seen them all. One of my favorites that I think depicts the wise guys the best is Goodfellows. Uh, of course, we know the Godfather is a masterpiece. Nobody could ever take that away from Mario Puzo. But uh, I, I think this could be a contender. I think this, this could be right up there with them, with uh, Goodfellows, Casino, and the rest of them. So if I get that lucky break, you will, you will one day see Sugar Paper up on the screen. Well, I think it's so impressive what you've done. <laughs> I, I want to read the book. <laughs> I'm so excited. So you that's should... how it all got started. I grew up, I was born and raised in Jersey City with a whole bunch of wise guys. <laughs> and so, and that's how Sugar Paper was born. That's and, awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it, I, I commend you. I mean, that is very impressive to be able to do that. Like, I just, I think it's great. And I love what you're doing. I hope somebody does do a movie on it. <laughs> I really do. Because um, now that you wrote it, I mean, why wouldn't they take it? I mean, it would be a great movie. Uh, I, I, hopefully, yes. Because history has taught us. They make, they, they make all the money in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, I always felt it was my destiny. And people say to me, well, Tootsie, you know what? What motivated you to to write a completely mobbed up book? And I give them the the, answer, the same answer all the time. And you know you can run with it and think of it whatever you wish. Think just think about this for a minute. My name is Gallo. I'm Tootsie Gallo. That should say it all right there. There's your answer. Right. And I think that goes that goes perfectly with the book. It does. And it was your calling. There's no doubt in my mind that you were meant to do this. So, well, you're very talented. I didn't realize that you wrote children's books and you were a poet. I didn't know any of that. That's very impressive. Uh, my you're very daughter, smart. My children's book came out before Sugar Paper. I can see the Rainbow Bridge. The sequel to it is coming out the first week in March. Will you be there when I call to you? Uh, but of, of all the genres that I write, uh, my favorite is poetry. I love to write poetry. And when I, when I, and I'm, I'm completing my next novel, uh, hopefully within the next few months, um, that's called Into Forever Land. And that's the complete opposite of this book. It's, it's a, a story about uh, 80 years of uh, childhood friendship and a beautiful love story thrown in there. So I don't want to stick in one genre. I want to mix it up. And hopefully someday when I finish that, the next novel, I'd like to put, put a book together uh, with some of my poetry because like I said, of everything that I write, poetry is my favorite. Where can we um, find your books? Where can we buy your books from? Um, you can get my book. It's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, um, Great Reads, all the you know the the, the bigger out, uh, book outlets. Um, you can order it uh, on their websites. It is it is available on all, all of those sites. Yeah. And then you have a website. It's Tootsie Baron, right? Uh, yes, I have my own website. It's tootsiebaron.com. And in there, you will find all my work, uh, the movie trailers for both of my books, especially for Sugar Paper, because it's the movie trailer that went out to uh, the production companies. Uh, you can see them on, on there. Uh, it's, it's all about my work. And um, I try to keep it pretty much up to date, let everybody know when something else is going on and what's happening. And it, it, it is that, tootsiebaron.com. Well, that's awesome. Um, everyone out there listening make sure and watching, make sure that you um, go to her website, www.tootsiebaron.com. And then also you can find her books on Amazon and all the other websites that she had mentioned. 
Um, I just want to thank you so much for sharing all that. I'm I'm looking forward to reading your book. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it. So because <laughs> I'm I'm interested. I I'm I'm partly Italian too. Um, part of I'm Italian and German. So into you one day, and I'll be happy to sign it for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I would I, yes, I would love that. <laughs> one day, hopefully, I can meet you, like in person. You know, but yeah, Crystal. You're welcome. Well, thank you again. Is there anything else you want to tell the audience before I close the show? Well, I just would, would like to wrap it up by telling them that as much as the heroine in the book is a woman, but the main character is is uncle, the odds maker. And I wrote, well, as I was writing the book, I visualized Dustin Hoffman playing uncle. In fact, I modeled my character when I describe him in the book at, uh, on Dustin Hoffman. Uh, I could really see him uh, in that role. Um, and I would hope that, but it's also a book for all the men as well. I have many friends uh, who, the, the men, they have, they bought this book and they, they love it. And, but I would encourage the women to read it as well because there's never been a a, a female character uh where, where you're gonna see what she's made of loyalty family loyalty and to be uh, to, to have such a prominent role and and that's why I'm hoping to get it to Hollywood because I'm I truly believe it's gonna open up the doors for women. Uh, in Hollywood to to get media and 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 larger larger than life roles. Uh, I think we need more of that in Hollywood. And they keep saying they they want to be more inclusive. So this is it. Sugar paper, come and get it. Put it up on the big screen. And I think Kiki will be the inspiration for uh, bigger things to come for women because of the, of the fact that she is the only woman that ever rose to the top in that world of nothing but men. Well, thank you again. And I totally agree. I think we do need more women in Hollywood. So I think that that, I think everybody should listen to what she's saying and go get the book. And if anyone out there is watching, um, you know, like a filmmaker, you know, I think it would be a great movie. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you again for coming on. And thank you everyone out there for listening. Till next time, I hope everyone has a fabulous evening. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Crystal, for having me. I appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. You're and welcome. I'll find a book for you one of these days. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I look forward to it. Okay. Have a nice day, dear. You too.